Welcome everyone to another episode of the Credit Concept Podcast. I am your host, credit coach Nicole Scott, and in today's episode, we are going to be covering a very popular topic, bank accounts. So if you are one of those individuals that have issues opening up bank accounts, you've been denied bank accounts, you want to watch this entire episode of the Credit Concept Podcast because we are going to be covering exactly what you need to do to correct this problem that you are having when you go to a bank and you apply for a checking account or a savings account and you're told no. And unfortunately, the banking institutions do not explain to you what you need to do, how to correct it, or any of those things. So now we're stuck with bank accounts like Chime, prepaid debit cards, and a lot of these places that of course are great if you can't get approved for anything else, but there's no real long-term benefit with these companies. So watch this episode. If you know someone that is struggling to open up accounts with banks, share this episode with them. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, my name is credit coach Nicole Scott, and I'm going to ask you kindly to subscribe to the channel credit coach Nicole Scott on Instagram and YouTube. So if you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure you have your bell notifications turned on so that way whenever I drop a new video on YouTube, you are notified of the greatness that I am dropping. Because let me tell you guys, I have spent thousands and thousands of hours and time and money on this information so I could simply share it with you guys. So you don't have to spend that amount of time and money to learn simple things like, hey, how can I open up a bank account if I am getting declined? How am I gonna get credit if I can't even open up a bank account? And there's a lot of misinformation out there But in today's episode, we're going to clear up all of those myths and really break down in simple terms what exactly you need to do in order to correct this so you can walk into a bank and open up a checking or savings account without any issues. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to head over to checksystems.com. And this link is in the description. You want to request your consumer report with check systems and with early warnings. These are the two data companies that are reporting your information to banking institutions when it comes to opening up a bank account. Now, I know a lot of you might think, well, maybe they're declining me because of my credit. But the truth of the matter is, not every bank is actually performing a credit check when you open up a checking or a savings account. Some banks do, don't get me wrong, but most banks will not perform a hard credit pull if you are simply opening up a checking or a savings account. But what they are looking at is your check systems report and your early warning report. These two data companies report banking history. And if you have had some hiccups in the past with banking, you know, maybe you didn't pay a late fee, you just let the closed account just kind of drift off into the sea and said, hey, I'm not paying it, I don't care, right? Well, you know, part of adulting is realizing, hey, sometimes we have to settle up our own old debts. Sometimes we got to take care of business that we don't want to, even though we don't agree with it. We're just not going to win this battle, right? So there's a few things that you can do. Um, The first step is obviously getting a copy of what it is that they're looking at, which is either going to be check systems or early warning. Um, The bigger banks like Bank of America, Chase... Wells Fargo, um, a lot of these banks are going to be pulling from check systems. Wells Fargo, 
they could potentially be looking at both. And I'm just going to be honest because I've heard, and I, and of course, this is not my personal experience, so I cannot confirm nor deny it. But I was told that they looked at somebody's early warning system and then they looked at someone's check system. So I don't know, you know, if that is 100% correct or not, because I'm not a huge fan of Wells Fargo, so I don't bank with them, just to be honest, right? <clears throat> I'm a huge fan of community credit unions, community banks, um, large credit unions. I like Navy Federal. And if you haven't watched my Navy Federal Masterclass, I'll leave some descriptions in the links below so you can watch that. There's a part one and a part two, and man, I, it's a game changer. So make sure to watch that. But um, Navy Federal per pulls from early warning. So if you are looking to correct either one of those you know, reports, you want to head over to their website. And again, links are in the description for their website. And you want to just request your consumer statement from either check systems or early warning. And, you know, one of the, one of the ways that I know people have issues opening up bank accounts is when they come to me and I ask them, who do they bank with? And I don't ask them because I'm nosy. I'm asking them for a purpose because when it comes to banking relationships, this is the easiest way for you to start building credit and start getting credit from the banking institutions that you bank with. But when someone comes to me and says that they bank with Chime, oh my God, I want to bang my head against the wall. And while I know why people like Chime, you get your paycheck a couple days early and you know they have a few things that can help build your credit, there's no long-term benefit with these people. They are very expensive in other fashions. They, you know, really target people who are not educated by telling them, hey, we can give you a bank account. We can pay you two days early so you don't have to go get a payday loan right before your check hits. Or, you know, we can give you a product to help you build your credit. But what we have to understand is when it comes to getting a real credit card, a high limit credit card, a credit card that has a low interest rate, credit you know, products, period, auto loan, home loan, Chime is not it. Okay, Chime is not it. Chime, you have to understand the demographic that Chime goes after. They go after people that, you know, have taken payday loans. They go after people that are not able to open up bank accounts with normal financial institutions because they've messed up in the past. But guess what? When we mess up in the past, sometimes it's very small. And all that we have to do is just pay the old debt, okay? I have helped so many people. Recently, I just had a client and he had the same issue. He had Chime. Um, soon as he had Chime, I knew he could not open up bank accounts because everyone that has been told no just goes to Chime because they will welcome anyone with open arms. And um, that's where we're at. So I we got the reports from Check Systems and for, from Early Warning. And we identified the issues. It'll tell you right there if you owe somebody money or if a bank is reporting that you owe them a balance. And oftentimes when I see a balance, it's very low. It's like under $500. But if you owe any balance to a bank and they've reported it onto your banking reports, which are with check systems and early warning, you are going to be denied a bank account with other financial institutions until you correct that, okay? Now, if it does not belong to you, of course, you can dispute this information and you can write the letter of dispute to check systems or to early warning. You also need to dispute the information directly with the financial institution that is reporting that onto your check system or early warning. So there's two things that you would need to do. Dispute it with the data furnisher and dispute it with the financial institution. Same concept when it comes to credit repair. You're disputing it with the three major credit bureaus. You're also disputing it with the creditor or the data furnisher that's reporting it to the credit bureaus. Now, uh, let me tell you something. They all have to follow the Fair Credit Reporting Act. 
So they're all under the same guidelines because at the end of the day, all that these credit reporting companies are, are data companies. They're all data companies. They are public, you know, for-profit data companies. They are not government owned. They are all independent businesses that specialize in sharing data. And, you know, with the amount of artificial intelligence and, you know, different systems and security that is out there, nowadays it's becoming harder and harder to actually run from your past. So if you've effed up in the past, now is the time to fix it, okay? If you've been a victim of identity theft and you have items that do not belong on some reports that you've, you know, pulled for yourself, now is the time to deal with it because it is 2023, Okay, it's going to be 2025 in a matter of before we blink our eye. Okay, and technology is rapidly increasing. Look how far we have come in just the last five years, 10 years. Look how much we've overcome in the last five years. ChatGBT came out. AI technology, game changer, okay? If you need help writing your dispute letters, use ChatGPT. It can literally write you a letter in a matter of minutes, okay? Seconds, really. You just go on there, sign up for a free account and say, hey, write me a dispute letter to early warning uh, data company because they are reporting inaccurate information on my consumer file with them. And they will write you a letter and you can you know, take what you will and add some additional things to it, but they'll set it up because a lot of people just don't do it because they're like, well, I don't really know how to say it. I don't know what to say. It's not a matter of knowing what to say. You don't really have to say much except for what you're trying to say is, hey, I have information that I don't agree with. This is fraudulent. This isn't mine. Or, hey, this is mine and I want to settle it. So if it is yours and or if you want to try to dispute it and validate that it truly does belong to you, that is your right as a consumer. So you can go through that process. If you're like, hey, this might be mine, but this might not be mine, but I know I owe them money, but I definitely don't owe them this much money, then of course you would need to contact the financial institution that is reporting that data to either check systems or early warning and ask them, hey, I want a billing statement of what you say I owe, because at this point, all of this information is alleged, and I disagree with the amount that you are alleging I owe you. Therefore, I am requesting how you came up with this amount. Where are these charges coming from? Some banks might call it, you know, a billing statement, you know, others might call it something else, but it's the same concept, right? It is a breakdown of the alleged charges that they say you owe, right? And that is a billing statement. So you want to see how you were acquired, how they calculated all of this alleged debt, okay? And if you are disputing some things, then you, of course, can dispute it directly with the bank. And the easiest way to get this corrected is to simply pay what you owe, okay? And if they are saying, well, hey, you had a late fee and then, you know, you didn't pay it for a couple months and then your account closed, you know, it might only be a couple hundred bucks. And I've literally had a client, another client, I had to pay $174, $174, that what was between them and opening up bank accounts, which can open up funding, which ended up, you know, resulting in a number of different credit cards with financial institutions that they were building banking relationships with. So $174 was the problem. But guess what? They just weren't educated. They did not know that, hey, I had to go and see what's on my report because they didn't know what was what was holding them back. They remember you know, some old stuff when they were young, but you know, I don't know really. So that's why we get the reports, see what it is that's on there and then either settle it, dispute it, 
you know, challenge it, go through the dispute process, and you can try to settle the alleged debt. Now, oftentimes when you contact the bank, you can say, hey, I have this amount reported on my check systems report, and I want to get this corrected, but I don't agree with the full amount that you are alleging I owe you. So I'm willing to make a settlement offer to you. And if the amount that they allege that you owe is like 500, you can start at, you know, 20 cents on the dollar. Okay. 30 cents on the dollar. The goal, 50 cents on the dollar. But if they are legitimate fees, then generally they're not willing to negotiate because if they're a late payment and they did not agree to waive that late payment, then you would just have to pay that. If it was an overdraft fee because they're, they're, that's money that you spent that you didn't have in your account and the bank covered it, you're going to have to pay that generally. Okay. So there's different scenarios. And, you know, if you were charged a late fee, we all know late fees can add up so fast, um, especially when you're charged for them, you know, $25, $35 a day, that can add up real quick. So you can try to speak with the manager and see, you know, if you do have late fees that were assessed, then you can see if they would be willing to provide a forgiveness for the late fees because you went through a hard time, you went through financial distress, maybe it was during COVID, whatever the situation is, you can always ask them if they would be willing to waive the late fees and, you know, say, Hey, look, I'm, I want to settle this with you guys. I'm finally back on my feet. I'm, you know, doing well. I want to, you know, salvage my relationship with you guys. And once you settle the amount that you actually owe and you pay it, it will then reflect as a zero balance to check systems or early warning. Now keep in mind when these type of accounts are reported. They are not reported to Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. They are just reported to check systems and to early warning in regards to bank accounts. Now, credit cards and financial products like credit products, that's a totally different ballgame, right? But we're just talking about banking right now, checking and savings account. So once you settle everything with the bank, they'll report it as you know, updated and you can even confirm with them, Hey, how long is this going to take to update? Generally it takes 30 days, just like the credit bureaus, 30 to 45 days. It will take to update because they report the data once a month to the credit bureaus. So check systems, early warning, same concept. They are a data company. They are, you know, a reporting agency. They just don't do credit. They do banking data. Okay. Financial institutions use them to open up a checking account or bank uh, savings account with their banking institutions. So, um, once it updates, you'll be able to then go and open up bank accounts with other institutions. Once that is cleared up, you are no longer a risk factor to new banks that you would go to and say, Hey, I want to open up a bank account with you. When they pull your report, they're not going to see that you owe a bank any money. Therefore, they will open up an account. If for some reason they're still denying you, you need to speak with a manager and get a clear understanding as to why they are denying you. If the banker does not know or the people in the branch do not know or whoever you're talking to does not know, you need to speak with somebody else because somebody there knows and they're just not telling you or they're just not educated. And shame on the bank for not educating their employees because this is ridiculous. You know, it's a shame that banking institutions will not tell you this information. And you know what, to be honest with you, years ago, when I was in my early 30s, I was having issues opening up bank accounts because I went through a tough time financially. And I went to a little local bank and I was like applying to open up a bank account and they told me no. And I was so embarrassed. It was so embarrassing. But they never told me why. They just said, I'm sorry, we just got a notification that, you know, we're not able to grant you an account. And they were trying to be nice about it. But it's like, well, just 
tell me why, you know, but they never told me, hey, you've got some stuff on your check systems or early warning report, or hey, we pulled your check systems report and there's some information on there that you would need to get corrected before we can grant you an account. Nobody ever is just going to tell you flat out that's what it is, but guess what? That's what it is. I'm telling you, this is what it is, okay? And if you need help with, you know, check systems or early warning, I can help you. I can coach you through it. I can walk you through it. I can help you with it. But of course, you're going to have to pay a fee. And, you know, my time isn't free, but I get it. You know, you probably would feel more comfortable dealing with someone who's already gone through it, but it can take time. So we just charge a one-time fee uh, to help you. And if you are interested, you can use the link below to sign up for a consultation. We can go over it because pricing would depend on, you know, how much work that we would have to do for you. If you want us to do everything, then, you know, it's going to be a little bit more. But if you're willing to help out and, you know, do some of the work, then it's going to be a little bit less. So we'll work out something that works for both of us, right? Because I want you guys to be able to open up bank accounts and build relationships with financial institutions because it's the easiest way for you to get high limit credit cards, better credit products, better interest rates on auto loans. So that way you don't have to go to the dealership and have them shop your credit 50 million times to get approved for a 28% interest rate. That's ridiculous. So you tell me I left here with 48 inquiries and I still got a 28% interest rate. So I'm paying $400 a month in interest. I'll take it. Why? Because I'm desperate. People are desperate and I get it. Oftentimes when we hear that word approved, that's all we need to hear. That's all I need. It's go time. It is celebration time. But really they don't understand what they just got approved for. They just got approved for a bunch of debt that's not going to go away anytime soon that they're probably going to end up defaulting on because the payment is too high. Okay. And let me tell you guys a quick story. I don't know if you, you know, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you've probably heard this story, but I'd like to share my experience with you guys just so you can say, Hey, I've been through that shit too. Right. Excuse my language, but dang, I cuss. I get in trouble on YouTube for cussing, but I get excited about this stuff. Right. And, and it's, I'm passionate about it because it's so easy to mess up, but it's so hard to fix. Right. And they, they really don't educate us about this stuff, right? When I was first learning, I'm like, well, where do I go to learn, right? I never thought I could go to, you know, YouTube and and Instagram and all these social media platforms to, to learn. But, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So you got to be really careful on who you listen to because some people will just hear stuff and repeat it and not really know, you know, and I've learned things from other people, but then, you know, I'll try to test the waters and see if I can, you know, verify the information somehow, some way. And, you know, with credit, there's not anything that's ever just black and white. There's always going to be a ton of gray area and what worked for one person might not work for the next person. Okay. So that's something that we just have to realize is, you know, you just have to understand the concept behind it and then apply it to your situation. And if you don't qualify right now, work on, you know, yourself, work on your credit, work on some things, and then you can apply again at a later date. So most places will let you apply like every 30 days. So, you know, you just need to make some corrections, you know, and and you can ask the bank uh, their reconsideration line, hey, why did I get declined? Tell me, tell me what I need to do to, to work on it. So next time I can get approved. And sometimes it's, you know, a very simple fix. But Um, Back to my story here, I walked into a dealership and let me just tell you guys, the Dodge Jeep Ram dealerships are the worst (laughs) and the Chrysler because they have all of these super high interest rate loans from places that you might think are good, you know, banks like GM Financial, uh, Chrysler Capital, and, you know, all of these high interest loan, auto loan places that will just kill you in interest every month. But they approve damn near everybody. 
Okay. And they do this on purpose because they're a bank and guess what? They're making more money on you with interest than it's actually going to cost them to get that car repossessed and then sell it at the auction. They've already profited off of you. Okay. So they approve a lot of people with bad credit, challenge credit, not to mention, you know, the other auto places out there that, you know, are just horrible in high interest and specialize in people with low credit. But they approved me. I got a GM financial auto loan, but all that I needed to hear was you're approved because at that time my credit was not great. And, you know, I always had good auto history, but my credit score sucked. And when I heard that approved word, I'm like, shoot, I'm ready to go. Heck yeah, let's go. I'll, I'll take it. Right. Little did I know my interest rate was like 20 something percent. Okay. Every month, my car note was like $650 for a Dodge Challenger. 600, not even nothing special, just a basic model. It was like a $30,000 car. Okay. It was brand new, but it was nothing fancy about it. It wasn't, you know, anything souped up. It was just a regular ass car. Oh my God. It just makes me sick. I was paying over $300 a month in interest. So the $650 payment that I was paying to the bank every month, half of that was going straight to interest. So my principal balance on my loan, it was like an eight year loan too. I would have had to pay that for eight years. And of course, you know, when you have an auto loan that's so unaffordable like that, that's not even including insurance. That's not including maintenance, okay? Overall, when it was all said and done with insurance, I was paying close to like 850, 900, we'll even call it close to $1,000 a month for an auto loan and auto insurance because when your credit is bad, guess what? You're going to pay more for insurance because you're a higher risk. Okay. So I was getting like basically double whammed, shammed, effed, if you will call it. Okay. On both sides, because I'm paying a huge car note for this, you know, car that's totally not worth it, not even worth what I owe. Right. And then I got shammed from the insurance company because my, my credit was so bad. So I'm literally paying damn near a house note for a freaking car. That's not worth nothing. Okay. And half of the payment that I pay every month goes straight to interest, straight to interest. So of course I ended up getting that car repossessed and I defaulted on it because it's not affordable. So, you know, we always have to understand the terms that comes along with it. If it sounds too good to be true, you got to ask yourself, well, what am I paying for then? You know, if you got approved and you have bad credit, you need to find out what the interest rate is. And I get it. Sometimes we're in situations where we just got to take it. But what you have to do is if you absolutely have to take a bad auto loan, take a bad auto loan, but you need to invest in fixing your credit. Why? Because you can refinance the auto loan in like six months. So six months after you can refinance the auto loan directly with a bank credit union that you are doing business with. So open up your bank accounts now with credit unions financial institutions that you, you know, want. If you're a big fan of, you know, Bank of America or Chase, go ahead, go with those. But you don't have to be monogamous to these banks. You can have multiple bank accounts. I wouldn't open up more than three at a time because of course that could like flag your account and say, why are they opening up so many accounts? You know, so take your time because there's nothing fast about credit. There's nothing fast about this process. So if I were you, I would open up three bank accounts as soon as you can. And, you know, look, do your research, okay? You can use the internet to to find out what banks are pulling from, you know, early warning, what banks pull from check systems, because like Navy Federal, they don't use check systems. They use early warning. So if you have issues with check systems, but you don't have issues with early warning, go after Navy Federal. 
still correct the problem. Don't think that you're scot-free, but you know, you still want to correct, connect, correct. I can't speak today, correct the problem, but, um, at least you can start building that relationship now because you never just want to like build a relationship, like take someone out on a first date and ask them to get in bed with you the same day. It's like, it might just not work. Right. Sometimes it does, but oftentimes it just doesn't, right? Same thing with the banks. If you have good credit and you ask them, you know, to go to the next level, you know, the day that you open up a bank account with them, they might say, okay, but if you don't have a good track record, they're like, no way, no way. Okay. So you have to just look at it like, Hey, we're building a relationship. Let's take it slow. I don't want to rush things. I want the bank to know that I'm a trustworthy individual because the more that a bank can trust you and the more that you've shown them your ability to repay back debt as agreed, manage your funds properly, the better you will be because you're going to get better terms, better approval rates. If you don't have, you know, negative or overdraft fees in your bank account, they can see that you have a direct deposit coming in. Of course, they're going to approve you. Of course, because they see that, hey, this person has a job or has a steady flow of income. And, you know, they, we're going to give them a shot, you know, they're building a relationship, they're keeping their money in our institution. So we'll give them a little bit of money too. And that's why I always say, you know, get your auto loans directly with the banks that you have relationships with. That's exactly what I did. And here's another story before we wrap this, um, you know, episode up. I know I talk a lot about guys, but I like to share information. So again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you have subscribed to the YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up because guess what? Your engagement with these videos helps me reach a wider audience, helps me help more people because there's tons of other people out there that you could potentially be watching and listening to and learning from. And, and granted, I've learned a lot of things from a lot of different people, but I will say this, some information that is provided on the internet is just not what it seems to be. It sounds good. It sounds great, but it's just not, it's, it's not true. It's not a hundred percent true. There's always going to be, you know, things that are not mentioned. Sometimes I do videos and I forget to leave things out, but guess what? Things are always changing as well. So what someone may have recorded two years ago might not be a hundred percent accurate anymore. No fault to them, but because, things are always changing. You know, just because I tell you today, Navy Federal doesn't pull from check systems, they can decide next month, hey, we're going to start pulling from check systems because everyone thinks that we don't. Okay. So always do your due diligence, no matter who you hear the information from. But I will just tell you this, I greatly appreciate you spending the time with me, listening to me, watching my videos, learning from me, learning from my mistakes and from my investments, because I'll tell you, that's what my goal was. My goal was to, you know, share information, teach people, coach people and help people because this information is not provided to us. It's not taught to us. It's not something that, you know, we're brought up with and it's getting better in society, but it's still not a part of the school curriculum, which is crazy to me because when we turn 18, we're expected to be adults and, you know, buy a car and get an apartment. But guess what? All those things, we need credit that's, that part's missed. (laughs) That part is totally missed. Okay. So, um, you know, when you have your credit in a good position, you can help your children, uh, put their credit in a good position because if, when you get credit cards with your banks and financial institutions, you can add them as an authorized user. As long as you're maintaining your card, like correct, hundred percent on time payments and low credit utilization, you can add your kids, you can add family members and help them piggyback off your credit. So uh, that's what, you know, authorized user trade lines are. And if you are interested in purchasing authorized user trade lines, I have a link below because we sell them if you don't have family or friends to, to get them from. Because sometimes they can be very beneficial to you if uh, it's the right time for you. And I did a whole video on trade lines. So make sure to head over to that. I'll leave the link in the description below. But all right. So my story that we've been talking about here is 
how I was able to get a $30,000 auto loan with no money out of pocket. And that's why I always tell you guys, watch the entire video because there's always gems dropped through all of my videos, okay? And I literally leveraged my relationship, my banking relationship with Navy Federal. I applied for an auto loan and you can apply for credit products with most banks or financial institutions right on their website or on their app. If they have an app, I recommend starting the process on the app because most financial institutions, well, some, I won't say most, some will pre-qualify you first. So you can even get an idea if you would get approved or not without a hard inquiry. So it's a soft inquiry, but it is not a hard inquiry until you accept the offer. Okay. If, if they say, Oh, we can approve you. If you then move forward, it's going to be a hard inquiry, but just because you are pre-approved does not mean that you will get approved when they run your credit because if they're just doing a soft pull. And that's another thing I'm going to do another video talking about, you know, these third party data companies, other than, you know, for the banking institutions, we're talking about, you know, LexisNexis and a lot of those other third party data companies, because, you know, oftentimes when people are going through credit repair, they freeze them, but um, they don't unfreeze them when they're done. And honestly, when you're going through the pre-approval process, a lot of financial institutions will use these third parties to get an idea if you would get approved or not. And if you have those locked, it could result in denials. So if you have issues or you have data on these third party data companies, you know, reports, I suggest that you request the report and dispute it just like you would with the credit bureau, because honestly, um, you know, you locking them, it has benefits and we'll talk about that in another video, but you'd really need to deal with the source, right? <clears throat> because it, in the future, you cleaned up your three major bureaus. And of course this takes time, right? People always say, Oh, just clean it up. Just clean it up. Like it's so easy. It's not. And shout out to the person that <laughs> actually commented on that on one of my videos. He said, why does everyone think it's just, why do people talk about cleaning up your credit report? Like, it's just so easy. Like, yeah, just clean it up and you'll be done. Like, it's so easy. It's not, it's not. Don't, don't feel like it is. It's not. It took me a good year to get through all the garbage that was on mine. So don't feel like, you know, it's not happening fast enough because it's not, it never happens fast enough for us, but it takes time and it takes consistency and persistence. But um, ultimately, when I did fix my credit and I started building a relationship and I was able to open up bank accounts again and got all my stuff in order, I, you know, opened up a bank account with Navy Federal and I, I was with them. I, I don't really know how long I was with them before I asked for an auto loan. It was my first auto loan with them was a refinance. So um, and that's not the story that I'm, I'm talking about, but I'll share that with you as well is, you know, when I first got Navy Federal, I, um, I think I was with them maybe six months or so, not that long, but I, the first thing that I actually applied, um, with them for was an auto loan refinance because I had another auto loan that I got from the Dodge dealership. Again, I knew that they would approve me. So I went back and I took another high interest loan. But in my mind, I said, okay, I am going to refinance this. I'm going to work on my credit and I'm going to refinance this. And of course they don't ever tell you any of this stuff at the dealership. They are all sales sharks. So you got to be careful and you have to go in there with the power. Okay. And we'll talk about that in another video, but, um, I got a loan and I refinanced it with Navy Federal and it saved me over $200 a month in interest because it was close to a 20% interest rate on that auto loan and I was thrilled. So now my interest rate is like a three, actually no, I think it's like a 4% on that car, 4.89%. And my credit score at that time was only about a 670. Now auto loan interest rates are much higher these days. So the going rate is like six, 7%. Um, at that time, you know, the going rate was like 2%. Um, but I got five and that was a whole heck of a lot better than where I was at. I guess I got actually got a 4.89. 
So I refinanced it. It saved me over $200 a month, which is a huge saving. That's over $2,400 a year. And that is just flushed down the toilet in interest. Okay. So I refinanced one auto loan with them. And then I went back about two years later and I applied for an auto loan with them. And, you know, I applied and I think initially I put that I wanted like a $70,000 car and they denied me. And I called in to the reconsideration line and I said, you know, I was denied. Is there anything that I can do? And they said, well, why don't you just try to reduce the auto loan amount that you're asking for? And I said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And so I reduced the auto amount to $30,000 because one thing that you have to understand is comparable credit, right? And at that time I had the highest auto loan on my credit profile was like 30 or 40,000. And I I think I had my Mercedes and my Mercedes was like a 70,000 one, but it's not paid off yet. So you know, all of the auto loans that were paid off in the past, all of them were around that 30 K range. So of course, comparable credit, right? If you want to get approved for an auto loan or a credit card, you have to have comparable credit lines on your credit profile for them to feel comfortable giving it to you. So they approved me for a 30 K auto loan, which was awesome because that allowed me to get my Toyota Camry and I love it. And guess what? My interest rate was only like 3%. So I literally went to a Navy federal branch and I walked up to the banker at the teller's office or teller's, you know, window or whatever. And I said, Hey, I'm here to pick up my auto loan check and here's my ID. And she, she did her little thing and she printed out my check right there in front of me. And she handed me my check for $30,000. And all that you have to do is just take that check to a dealership that is authorized to accept, um, you know, funding from Navy federal. My preference is CarMax because, There's no hassle. They're not trying to sell you. You don't feel forced. If you don't love your car, you can return it. Um, They have a 30 day guarantee. If you don't love your car in 30 days, you can take it back. And I have taken back two cars to them. Okay. So um, I love them. There's no hassle. They're fair on their prices. They have, you know, so many different options, different cars. If you see a car that you like, but it's not in your area. Sometimes you can have it shipped if it's still available. But anyways, you can walk into a dealership of your choice and present them with that $30,000 check. And guess what? No money out of pocket. As long as that check covers, you know, the car amount and the fees associated with it, you do not have to pay anything out of pocket. I literally walked in to a bank with this check. I gave it to CarMax and they wrote it for the amount and it was a little under 30K, but guess what? It was like 28, something like that with all the taxes and the fees and, and everything. And I even included gap insurance and that's the only insurance that I would ever recommend that you purchase at the dealership. You always wanna make sure that you have gap insurance. And some insurance agencies offer it as a, you know, part of their insurance package. Some of it, it's additional, but you can actually purchase it at the time that you're buying your vehicle and it will stay with your loan. So if you wreck your car and the insurance company only gives you 17,000, but you owe 28,000, gap insurance is going to pay the difference. So you won't have to pay anything out of pocket. Now, of course, if something does happen, still pay your payments until everything is, you know, done and said, even if you don't have the car, because you'll mess up your credit, but that's how it works. So you can literally, you know, leverage your relationships with banking institutions when you are able to get a bank account with them and you can go get auto loans with no money out of pocket. Like think about how many times you've been shopping for an auto loan and you go there and they want, you know, all this money down and it's still a crappy deal, still a crappy interest rate. And it's just like, just a nightmare, right? And, you know, you can easily avoid that. When you go in with your own financing, you want to 
make sure that you talk to the finance manager. And honestly, I would call, I would do as much research over the internet and over the phone as possible before you go in there. Because when you go in there, they're going to try to get you to do their financing, go through them. They want to pull your credit. No, you don't need to pull my credit. You don't need to do none of that. I I already have funding from my bank. I'm just here to buy my car. So that's why I like CarMax because they don't hassle you like other, you know, car dealerships do. I went to the Jeep dealer with my own financing. And they told me that they had to pull my credit to verify my identity. I was like, no way, no way. You're not going to do that. No way. So I didn't even go. So that's why you want to make sure before you go to a dealership, um, if you aren't going to CarMax, you want to speak to the finance manager and make sure that they accept funding from your banking institution. Because I've actually been lied to. I talked to a salesperson. I saw like a, um, a vehicle that I wanted at a dealership and it was a Hyundai dealership and I drove an hour and a half to get to the dealership and when I get there guess what they don't take outside financing from my bank but they can get me approved for a great rate directly with them no way and it wasn't because like basically they lied to me but it was my fault because I didn't speak to the finance manager I spoke to a sales representative who of course just wanted me to get in the door. They, their goal was to get you to the, in their door so they can sell you. And that was a lie. And they were literally chasing us out to the parking lot. I was like, get away from me. You are harassing me. Leave me alone. We are not doing business with you because you lied to me. And I wasted my time driving out here for nothing. Goodbye. You know, sometimes you just have to tell people sternly, like, no, it's not happening. Like, I feel swindled or whatnot, you know? So that's why you got to talk to the finance manager and just confirm, hey, I have outside financing from this bank. Do you accept it? Yes or no. Okay. So that's, that's my story. And, you know, that's why I'm a huge advocate of being able to open up bank accounts with real banks that can offer you real credit products and great approval rates in the future. And you don't have to have a perfect 750 credit score. You know, of course, 850 is the perfect one, but 750 is pretty up there. And, you know, it's, it's tough to maintain that, especially in the time that we are in. The credit card debt is at an all-time high. I'm seeing more and more people struggle from credit card debt. And it's, it's scary, but we have to, you know, we have to spend less money or make more money. One of the two. So, um, that's it. And that's all for it. If you need help with anything, visit the links below, make sure that you've subscribed to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram. I have two Instagram or three Instagram accounts because Instagram always shuts one of them down. It seems like, but you can follow me at credit coach pros on Instagram or credit coach, Nicole Scott on Instagram. And, um, of course, subscribe to YouTube because that's where I'm going to be at from this point forward. I'm not going to be focusing on Instagram anymore because they keep trying to verify me after I've already verified them. And it's like, I don't know what more I can do with those, (laughs) with those people. Like it's crazy. They just shut down my Instagram page this week to verify me and I verified it. And then they took my verification check mark off saying that they could not verify my identity, which is crazy because I just verified it. And of course there's no one there to help you because they use all of this AI software and it's just a nightmare trying to get in touch with anybody there. My Facebook account was hacked a year ago and I had to completely start all over, which was a nightmare because there's nobody to help you. The only people that will ever call you from Facebook are the ads department because they're trying to sell you, make money off you. Everyone else is overseas and just does not understand. So it's it's a horrible you know, setup that they have. Hopefully it'll get better. But at any rate, I appreciate you guys sticking around for me with me for this long, of course. And, uh, you know, you could have been anywhere today and listening to anyone, but you decided to, you know, spend some time to learn before you earn. And I appreciate that. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Again, my name is credit coach, Nicole Scott, subscribe, hit that like button, leave me a comment. Let me know if you have found value. And again, if you are interested in purchasing any of our digital products, I have a personal credit 
course that includes all of our ebooks, letter library, so much more. We're always adding to it. And then I also have our business credit course and I have a Turo course. All of the links are below. And if you haven't by now, make sure that you are taking action daily. Write down your items that you have to do. Okay, get you a notepad. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. You can literally just use, you know, any notepad that's, you know, binded together so you can keep track of everything and start writing down your thoughts, right? Writing down everything that you have to do. It might not be something that gets done this week, this month, or this year, but you need to write it down. If it comes to mind, write it down, okay? Write it down. It eliminates it from being on your brain and it feels so great to be able to cross that off once it's off your to-do list. All that I'm asking you to do is take action daily to get one to three items done per day. One to three items off your to-do list, scratched off like, ah, it's done, finally, yes. But sometimes there's uh, multiple action items that are needed for one thing. So if you're talking about fix, fixing your check systems report, okay, what, is, what does that entail? It means, you know, I'm going to request... I got to request my check systems report. I got to request my early warning report. I got to contact the bank. I got to, you know, do this and do that. So you got to make sure you write everything out so you don't skip any steps. And then you can cross the things off as you are done with them. And you can always, you know, move things forward on new to-do lists. So just stay organized. Try to get at least one to three things done per day. And attend until next time... And until next time, I truly appreciate you and I want you to win. So make sure to watch all of the episodes in the Credit Concept Podcast coming up next.